Hey guys, and welcome back to my devlog. And this is the second installment to our series. In the last episode, we did a high level review of what the game could do and what we were working on specifically. In today's episode, we'll be working on new enemies and how to control them, as well as a new combo system. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, what we want to do is to create our model. And I was thinking about creating a wolf and I do have some sort of reference for that. So uh, what we want to do is to get Blender opened and then I'll just delete some of these models here. And I'm just searching for the images to planes add on. I don't think I have this on my Blender. So I'm just going to go into the preferences here and get that installed. Let me just see if I can find that here on the add-ons. So we just add just search for the planes, images to planes. And this is a really good tool for if you're trying to get some kind of reference into your, your 3D modeling. And because I am actually using a reference uh, for the wolf, so I'm just gonna get that here. Let me just install this. And then you can just import here. And then images to planes, and I'll just find my reference from these files here. Okay, so now that I have my reference, let me just scale that a bit. And then I'll turn on the textures so that you can actually see the writings, the drawings on the planes, on the picture. And I'll just try to just get this here. All right, so we just wanna have that in place so we can see that here. And don't worry guys, I'm not here to waste anyone's time. I do have three hours worth of raw material, but we're just gonna speed up what we have here so we can get through the process as quickly as possible. Okay, so the first thing that we tried to do was to just model that wolf out from with the reference from the cube and then I even sculpted some parts of it and then we're just going to try to get the paws together. Try to add in a few minor details just so that it doesn't look too bad for the game. So I'm just trying to match up to the reference as soon as possible and to be honest this is one of the laziest methods that I've come to find is to actually UV map out the eyes. So as you can see here, I'm just UV mapping on the eyes. I actually did that drawing myself. And this is probably one of the laziest things that you'll ever see someone do in 3D modeling and that I drew the teeth on, like I just drew literal spikes and just placed that on the planes of the object. And at this point, I'm just trying to fix up the animation. So I did give it a rig. I give it, I generated that rig completely for the dog. If you actually go through Blender, Blender you can actually put together the rigs and, and Blender has rigs for animals so I used a wolf rig and then I just went from there and I generated the rig and I just set up the animations from there. So at this point I'm just trying to get the animations together properly and I'm just tweaking everything and you should see all of that process done. Okay. So the next thing that we'll want to do is to get that model imported into Unity. Now that we have the model imported, we want an enemy script to get that model moving around. Luckily for us, I do have a base enemy script that I was using for testing purposes in the last episode. Okay, so we're going to try to get this script to be as basic as possible, just for some movements and attack. Let me just scan the script so that we can see what I want specifically for the wolf. Okay, so we're just going to create a completely different script for the enemy wolf and just call it enemy wolf, just to keep everything nice and organized. Now we're just going to add important parts of the enemy script to our new enemy wolf script. Specifically, what we're grabbing are the parts for movement, basic attacks, and functions that chases the player if they are within a certain range. Alright, so now that we have that done, the next thing that we'll want to do is to attach the enemy wolf script to our wolf model and adjust a few of the settings. 
like his movement speed and the size of his sphere collider, which allows the objects to interact with him. Finally, we'll want to set up an animator so that all, or at least some of his movements, will look fluid. Let's just call that wolf. Okay, so I put together some sick animations, one for the basic attack, one for death, and a secondary attack for the running animation. So now let's just finish setting up the animations in the animator. And now that we have all of that set up, let's just place the wolf outside of his detection range and test it out. Alright, so let's just get over there closer to him and just test out. Oh wow, this wolf is kind of vicious. At least we know that the attacks work. Okay, so the player falls out of the map. Alright, so let's just test out his proximity range and how he chases the player. It looks good so far, but his head is doing something weird, but we'll fix that later. Alright, so that's working. Now it's time to get some revenge and test out some of these combos. Oh, death, death animation isn't looking too good, but that was the kick combo. Alright, so we're going to be doing the punch combo now. Ooh, Alright, so the death isn't looking too good for right now, but we'll try and fix that up later. And then there is a punch combo that ends with a kick. Let's just embrace that death animation for a second. Alright, so for now and testing purposes, any of the final attacks will trigger the death animation for the wolf. Alright, so with that I believe we'll end the video here. And in the next one we'll be focusing on map creation and maybe balance the mobs a bit and have them spawn in groups. Please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to continue this journey with me and leave a comment if you'd like to be a part of the journey.